Monday. I love Mondays, don't you? Mondays are the day we get to go back to work and sit in traffic and wanna, wanna murder people and not sleep. And, uh... <laughs> but Monday is also the day for a fresh FAQ Monday. So thank you so much for joining me. I am your host, Fluff, and you know what? We're gonna dive right into it. I'm not even gonna talk about my delicious Stumptown coffee from Portland, Oregon. First question! You can only play one guitar, amp, and pedal for a year. What would you choose? Having just got back from months of touring, you know what? I'm gonna say my Meeseeks Hyperion from Balaguer Guitars. That thing was the most rock solid piece of gear I've ever had, honestly. And it didn't let me down once. So, guitar is my Meeseeks, my Baby Blue Hyperion. Pedal, I'm gonna have to say either a tuner or a noise suppressor. And I don't know if that's what you meant by your comment, by your question. I think the spirit of your question is probably one effects pedal, in which case I would probably choose a reverb, honestly, uh, for the uh, melodic parts, the overdub parts of the, of the songs that my band plays. And one amp, I would absolutely choose the Rockover Mark III 50 watt. Because again, I know that as reliable. I don't want to worry about gear breaking down. That's just the worst thing ever. That's where my mind immediately goes. If I have to play something for a year, I am taking the most rock solid thing I can possibly take out. I don't care what it is, how much it costs, or what it's worth, sentimental value. I want something that's not going to let me down. So, Hyperion, Mr. Meeseeks, uh, tuner or a noise suppressor, or, an, or, or, or a reverb and an orange Rockerverb 50 Mark III. Those are, those are the three things I choose. All-time favorite punk band? Oh, man, that's tough. That's really tough. Um, I would probably have to say it's either Bad Religion or Pennywise. And I don't know which one it is. I think it depends on the day of the week because Fletcher was such a huge, huge, force in my life when I was like 15 years old and he's the reason why I wanted to really learn how to just play as fast and do those fast palm muty things as opposed to doing whittly whittly lead stuff but then Bad Religion had the songwriting and they had the harmonies and the oohs and ahs which were incredible as well I don't know probably if I had to pick one probably I would say Bad Religion just because of the songwriting if you had to buy a bass under $200, what would you get? If I had to buy a bass under $200, honestly, I would buy an a Fender Affinity Jazz Bass, the Squire Jazz Bass. I think it's $199. It might be even less than that. I think the starter pack is $199. Those basses are pretty killer. They can be really killer. Uh, dude, Rob Scallon recorded with the Affinity P Bass for Oh, geez, years and years and years. And all you would have to do really is just change out the pickups. That's what I would, the one thing I would do with any of the Affinity stuff. But Fender's killing it right now. So yeah, I would get an Affinity Jazz Bass. That's what I would do. Um, you guys out there, help them out. Comment down below, what would you get uh, if you had a $200 budget and you needed a bass? Once in a while before I go to work, I accidentally leave my amp on standby. Am I damaging my amp? You are not damaging your amp. Actually, the whole reason for the standby switch is so you uh, save life on your power tube so they're not getting hit with that full current and the full power and they're just sitting there and cooking. When I'm on tour, uh, after we do sound check, I put my amp on the standby, but I leave everything idling, uh, idling and on, but in the standby position. So the basically what's going on internally is the power tubes are just being kept warm and ready to go when you flip the standby off. Then they get the full juice. But if it's on, if the amp is on standby, you can really technically leave it on just about forever and you'll be just fine. You're not hurting anything at all, as opposed to leaving it on full blast, like on with the standby off and just sitting there. That's, that would be a way different story. But no, if it's on standby, man, you're fine. And now Fluff reads a tweet. Is there such thing as a coffee IV drip? Asking for a friend.
My suggestion to you this week is to check out this incredible video breaking down how the Deftones write a song. This is a real, real deep dive into what is actually going on with the songwriting structure that make Deftones songs really, really unique and what the individual members are actually adding to the individual songs that he's dissecting. This is a really great video, highly informational, and if you like Deftones, uh, definitely check it out as well. All the Pikmin links down below in the description. You've been wonderful, I've been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.